this game over and done with. Now we're in the ridiculous stage. Let's have to collect lots and lots and lots and lots of mammoths. It's the sun, which is the premise of the game. So we have I think I left it out ten. So we need more. Okay. Not jumping He's gonna die soon. Old age. So we got eleven. Thank <laughs> you. 
to climb this mountain. Well, it just uh, does get me a big jump, doesn't it? Did I actually pick it up? I think so. Twelve. Well, this guy's gonna die anytime soon, so... Let's see how long it takes for him. Sleeping a long time because oh, and he got interrupted. That means he's gonna, he's gonna die soon. Excellent key. You can watch Hex do the deed. I think you were the only one watching. nice little seri series of games. Um, it goes on sale often, so you can find the deed collection on Steam if you want it. I'll have to try again. I've been thinking about what I'll do next time. Maybe framing the uh, butler is, is an option. Will you have a job soon? Okay. Good luck with that. So you had an interview, what, like a week ago? Whatever happened about your coronavirus test? hasn't happened yet. Okay. Is, are you planning to do one or? Or is there to take a long time to arrange? I can't tell whether I got a tusk or not, because I didn't click the turn. I think you can actually tell from this thing. You just have to count the number of... Alright, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... 
plus the outer one, 11. But I'm sure I got two this year. Alright, I don't know. The game will end right now. It's... I heard. S At this point, I might get an antibody test for the people who might orbit had it. I see. So, how long is... Like, the antibody test, is it... It's valid for, what, like a few months after catching the disease? Too symptomatic for one asymptomatic. Here in Thailand, not there's things are not looking great. There was uh, a, a Burmese lady uh, who came to Chiang Mai in the north and didn't do quarantine, and she was also symptomatic and um, went to a cinema and a shopping mall in some places, and they've tracked down two others who also tested positive. I think. So, <laughs> I mean, Thailand's done a brilliant job so far, but all it takes is one idiot to screw everything up. But uh, so far, they still seems like they've managed to contain it because they contained it before. Thailand did have out outbreaks in the past, two of them, but they, they managed to contain them before they ever spread to the local population properly. So, I don't know, hope they managed to pull that off again, but there's only so many times they can keep doing that. Like Thailand has a like a volunteer network from the villages of of like um, contact tracers. So once there's an outbreak, all these volunteers like help track down all the people and do all the testing and stuff and start setting up like mobile testing units in Chiang Mai. And so the people are really committed to getting this done. Like like in some countries, unfortunately. Yeah. But Thailand has sacrificed so much to keep it this way. Now, like, tourism is dead here. They're victims of their own success, as the media puts it. They have no COVID, but they also have no tourism. And if Thailand finally succumbs to the virus, then then basically they've sacrificed their tourism economy for nothing. What's going to happen to that lady? Because she clearly broke the law by doing that, and she also put the country in jeopardy. So, it faced pretty strict punishments. And this is Thailand, one of the most horrible um, prison systems in the world. Isn't there a monkey riot? Oh, I saw some video of some monkeys at a temple rioting, maybe because they weren't getting all the f crap that tourists feed them. Um, yeah, it's possible. I wonder if monkeys can catch the virus. Possibly. I don't really see any monkeys nowadays. I don't really see many monkeys around here anyway, but when I 
some countryside locations I do see monkeys, but they've probably gone into hiding. animals, including monkeys, this can only be a, a good thing for their future, if, unless the, in a couple of years tourism comes back with full force and spoils them again. I never know if I'm actually picking up the task or not. Some scientists, I don't know if they are, or, uh, if this is plausible or if this is even like properly peer reviewed, but some scientists say that the um, the Thai uh, dengue fever, nat I mean, all the people in these countries have natural. Um, resistance to dengue fever. Uh, and some scientists say that maybe the dengue fever resistance is why Southeast Asia and cell in general is doing so well against COVID. Why it's not spreading so much. Or why people are not so symptomatic here. I have no idea if there's any real scientific basis for that, but I don't know. Some people have suggested it. I mean, if that's the case, it would always it would also explain why Africa is doing so well against coronavirus. At least certain parts of Africa. Relying on all the coronavirus. One of. I didn't really understand that sentence. You're relying on, on it. What do you mean by that? like building up an immunity See, I'm not sure how it works with this but isn't it basically uh, consistent exposure is actually extremely bad uh, not, not unlike with other diseases I see it seems all the doctors and nurses who are exposed to patients with the virus are just plain dying because uh, of their continuous exposure.
Okay, I've gone off. Okay, definitely don't need to go here. So thought that regular coronavirus exposure helps lessen severity. I guess that's plausible to an extent, but then once you go over a certain threshold of exposure, you're actually probably building up too much. And um, that would explain why the doctors and nurses are suffering so much. Um, but yeah, if you expose yourself a bit, you probably avoid actually being symptomatic. Um, But I, I mean, I wouldn't want to catch it at all. Like, I can stay in Thailand for the next couple of years if, if, if that's what's needed before anything gets resolved. Then I'll try my best. I've heard people have walked away with permanent, permanent uh, damage to their lungs or loss of sense of smell and stuff like that. Testicle pain is a common symptom as well. That lasts even months after um, the virus goes away. I don't see many. I don't see many uh, like, um, media sources talking about testicle pain, but I've seen lots of actual journals and articles by by um, researchers talking about it. Maybe it's just something no one wants to talk about. I see. So like other coronaviruses, I don't know if that's a thing, it could be. Exposure to other coronaviruses gives you some sort of protection against this one, maybe. Yeah, I should ask my um, my friend about that. He's a he's actually a coronavirus consultant, so he got a big break <laughs> when when this virus broke out. Like, it's boosted his career. Before that, he was literally just going hungry. He was finding it so difficult to get work because no one wants to. A, these people who do so much great work. He's an Oxford educated um, coronavirus expert who's worked with Ebola and lots of diseases and he gets paid pennies. At least until now he's actually getting paid a bit more. Than that. Where are these two mammoths? Need to make them. Oh no, have I made them extinct? In January, he was invited to the U.S. to invited by a company in, in the U.S. to actually help with the coronavirus effort. He was going to be one of the first, like, to actually get involved with this. But of course, the U.S. denies his visa because even apparently, even a job like that isn't important enough for him to visit the U.S. He's Mexican. Okay, it looks like I'm about to die. So I didn't find any food, and I didn't find any mammoths. Even today, he still can't get to the US. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but at this point, he doesn't want to. He's better off going to Germany or somewhere, but he's still applying and he's still not getting the visa. This 
this lady's gonna die. Oh no, there's death. There's death. There's death. Oh. Alright, and I'm gonna switch their tattoo to the jumping tattoo, because that seems to be the fastest way to travel. So as far as I can tell, he's now... He's now a, a freelance, like, remote coronavirus consultant. Like, which is interesting. People pay him to do, like, video chat with them, and then he tells them what they need to do to set up their, um, set up their equipment and what they should investigate and stuff. And then they, like, pay him remotely. Like, he can't, he's, he's been trying to get a, a in-person job or something, but he can't, so. But he's making money that way, and he's getting a reputation, so it works. Alright, Slinky. See you next time. Don't know which one of these is the jumping one. Let's try. This one maybe. Mm, don't think it's this one. It's not the eye. About this one. So I'll be able to tell if I just try jumping now. No, that wasn't it. Wasn't that one, was it? Okay, maybe the one on the right. Oh, it's not that one. Okay, I'm just gonna look this up. Okay, tattoos, we got Leap is on the left. The furthest one on the left, okay. lost track of how many mammoths I have. Maybe it's better if I don't count them. It's kind of boring to count them. Wait, did I really get leap? Because I don't see him leaping. Oh yeah, that's a leap. That was a leap right there. Right. 
Pattern of jumping. Okay, if I do this, that actually works. No, no, no. Okay, so... So we're at like 14, maybe? Okay, one more and I'd say we're kind of halfway there. Two more, because you actually need 31. Okay, that moves really fast if I do it like that. see what's going on here. What just happened? Okay, I don't know if I took the task or not. Let's say we did 15.
be glad to be done with this game. I mean, I knew it would be a weird game, but I was hoping it I was hoping it would be one of those weird games that turns out to be kind of fun too, but this is weird and tedious. Collecting 31 mammoths, that was ridiculous, like, why couldn't they have made it 10 or something? There's no challenge. I mean, getting the first few is the challenge. Once you get the rhythm going, you just keep going to 31. At least it has good caveman techno. Okay, so that's definitely one. So that puts us on maybe 16. Could probably save it here. I should be able to finish it this stream. And hype. So I think I'm on 16 mammoths. This is just a ridiculously tedious part of the game. You just have to keep hunting mammoths. And it seems to be that one mammoth that spawns up there, which seems to be the best one to find. So he should be around here. Um, uh, not too far. Whoops. It's not going very fast, is it? Uh oh, could actually drown. Quantum, have you you played Inside, right? I think you mentioned you played it off stream once. you mentioned that you played it. Okay. Yeah, I played through the whole game in one in one go. It's quite short. It's quite quite surreal in places. Like serious there's some serious WTF moments, but the puzzle element is actually a lot easier than limbo. Um 
there's just some subtle puzzle tricks here and there, but it's there's no nothing really that difficult, um, relatively. It's a lot more focused on the atmosphere and the some of the weird shit. <laughs> yeah, it's a good game. Oh, it only takes about three hours. Okay, where is this mama? Should be around here. I'm starting to recognize these trees. No, he's not. Damn it. They really have to put so few mammoths around this tundra. There's just one that spawns in the. Okay, why am I climbing this? die of starvation if I don't find one. Alright, this is the zone I should be in. The white zone, not the grey zone. Whoa, everything's got red. Okay, we should be just... to sleep. Should be just here on the left. Or have I gone back to where I was? I don't want this guy to die because he's got a good lifespan. Yeah. There's another caveman there. No, I'm just back here. Let's backtrack a bit, see if we can get some food. Ah, ah. No, that wasn't a... It's a pig. Alright, let's just get it for food anyway. So, when you get the pig, that means if you go f due north, there's normally a mammoth. There's a caveman there, did he kill the mammoth? Maybe this one has not spawned in for some reason. Some RNG here. Hopefully next time I spawn, you'll be here because if I climb this, what's at the top of the mountain anyway? Just 
this ice. By the time I get to the top, I'm gonna starve. There's not gonna be any mammoths up here, are there? Okay, yeah, do not want, do not want to go there. Doesn't look like there's any land beyond there. All right, doesn't seem to be any mammoths. Maybe if we just bring some meat back and then go back, maybe it'll respawn. And he's gonna sleep on the edge there. those planets and stars. to this battle. Well, all that would be for nothing. I've got it. See, I can never tell whether I'm holding the tusk. I don't know if I can. Alright, 17. Let's try and get to 20. Let's try and get to 21. And then next stream I'll go for 31. So yesterday I bought the games that I wanted to buy from the autumn sale. I got um, Spyro Reignited Trilogy, um, Atamari Damasi Reroll, because I've never actually played Atamari Damasi, the PS2. Um, but this is like a remaster for the PC and it's supposed to be decent. I got a bundle which included all the Dishonored games and Prey. Actually, I already have Dishonored 1 and 2, so it just gave me the some sort of expansion, or I think it's a standalone game that comes after 2. Death of the Outsider, Dishonored, Death of the Outsider, and Prey. Um, Else. Black Mesa. Nah, the autumn sale is over. Finished yesterday. But there'll be a winter sale. But the autumn sale tends to be better than the winter sale, I think, in terms of discounts, I'm not sure. Wait, why am I climbing this? This means I've gone too far. Um, yeah, Prey will probably be on sale again in the winter sale. I mean, Prey is old enough now that it's just going to keep going on sale. How did the mosquitoes get to the 27th floor? Okay, I'm gonna have to put some spray on.
Um, got a couple of other games. So I got Black Mesa. I got a puzzle game called The Swapper. Oh, and I got another puzzle game, Quantum Conundrum. Which looks like a nice little comedic um, puzzle game about dimension hopping. So, on 17? If I go straight north, no change in directions, let's see where that gets us. That will help figure out our bearings for finding the moment. Due north without really going, of course, and then what happens? And we get to a mammoth, he's directly north of us. Alright, so take that into account. However, it's the fastest way to get there is to actually go a little bit diagonal. So we're at 18. I do recommend the um, the first game that was called Prey, which has absolutely nothing nothing to do with the new game called Prey. Um, that's a really cool game, and it actually. It was before Portal, and it actually introduced like the concept of portals in that game too, and they were quite well done. It has all kinds of really crazy stuff like changing gravity around, um, portals, portals that make you small, go, go, to on, go onto a... You can go onto small planets that you can walk all the way around, and the gravity pulls you to the center of them, so it's like all, all kinds of different ways that gravity works. Um, it's underrated now. Like no one really talks about that game, but that game was actually very impressive. Prey, the first game that was called Prey. The new game is not a sequel, or it's not even in the same universe. Uh, it has it actually has nothing in common with Prey. But the first, the first. Prey was about basically the premise is you're a Native American who gets uh, abducted by a UFO. <laughs> so you use your Native American instincts and your spirit walking and stuff to get around. But it's really, really cool concept and it had lots of very clever game mechanics in it. Like, um, A lot of different mechanics using gravity and portals and stuff. It's 
I mean, it's very dated now, but you, it's actually on, on Abandonware, so the game is basically free now. Because I don't think anyone sells it. In fact, that's the reason a lot of people are kind of annoyed with the new Prey. I mean, it, it is a good game. It is a great game, but uh, when it was announced, a lot of people thought that this was the sequel to Prey. And at the end of the original Prey, they actually made a... They, they, they even had a to-be-continued <laughs> screen, like they went as far as that. So people were waiting for the second Prey. And at some point, the actual second Prey was announced, and there was actually a really impressive trailer for it. And that was abandoned. And then this Prey was announced, and people thought, oh, it's, it's come back. But no, it was a completely different game. And so that left... Uh, that made a lot of people bitter, and for that reason, I think... That affected the new praise ratings because a lot of people just didn't want to play it because they were annoyed <laughs> that it wasn't actually related to prey. There we go. Mammoth hunting is making me hungry. I have to finish soon. A big pork chop in the fridge waiting for me. Oh, not too far. Okay, so once I get to here, I think a little bit to the right. I should just go straight north because apparently I get lost whenever I go a bit diagonal. There he is. So, uh, Quantum, what percentage are you on on, on Crash?
I'm guessing like 80 something. I didn't really catch most of last stream though. And do... Oh, nice. But those are like the some of the hardest ones out of the way then, right? So it's actually very feasible. <laughs> um, well, I got Spyro reignited, so I really want to 100% that. Because Spyro, like Crash, is a is a good good game to 100% on because they have lots of different quests given by different people interesting characters and stuff. It'll take me a long time though. And Spyro 1 was the hardest. Once I get rid of this Tale of the Sun, once I finish Tale of the Sun, I could actually move on to Spyro because that's kind of like a console game to replace it. Okay. Yeah, Tumba is. Uh, I mean, coming from Crash, you'll find it a lot easier. <laughs> in terms of game mechanics. The difficulty is more in the RPG style stuff, like getting confused about who you're supposed to talk to next and stuff. But, but I mean, I guess you're used to that from the Final Fantasy games, so... When I, when we finally left, when I was a kid and we finally left Saudi Arabia to come back to crummy old England, um, my parents just went out and bought a bunch of random PlayStation games, like, cheer me up, because clearly I was, was quite disappointed at having to go back to England. Um, but they didn't know what games I liked, so they just got random things they saw in the shop. And they got As a Dreams, Tumba, and a couple of others which turned out to be well, As Dreams and Tumba turned out to be the best games I ever played on the PlayStation. Um and I, I don't know, I probably wouldn't have I might not have picked them if I had chosen myself, so I mean As Dreams is extremely is an underrated game, not many people played it. And the reviews were bad for it, because the reviewers just didn't get the game, they just didn't understand <laughs> how to enjoy it. Once I came to England, I had to kind of stay inside more because it's 
Saudi Arabia, I had so much freedom, ironically, because we were living in a compound. I could just, as a kid, I could just go on my bike and cycle wherever I wanted. It was incredibly safe, um, even late, even in the evening when the sun had gone down. And the weather was always, I mean, it was hot, but it was always consistent. Once I came to England, it was just rainy, cold, and unsafe. I couldn't go out by myself often. So, just had to play more PlayStation. Whoops. <laughs> All right, I'm at 20. Let's go for one more to get to 21. I've probably been miscounting though. I bet I'm above 21. I'll go for one more anyway. So I looked up what the speedrun for this game is. It's the most boring speedrun in the world. It's basically you start the game and you run straight north, fight the mammoth with your bare hands, which takes a long time, and then just do that 31 times. A real test of endurance. I mean, someone had to speedrun it. <laughs> but that is really all you can do. I mean, what I've done is I've kind of developed my civilization more so that I end up with a spear and stuff, but that takes too long. Like, you can, from the very start of the game, just go straight to the mammoth and fight him with your bare hands, which means you've got to just keep dodging his attacks and going around in circles. It's always interesting, those games where, where the the uh, the end boss or the, the trigger for ending the game is is there in the world, but the aim of the game is to develop yourself to actually get to it. Like As a Dreamers was one of those games. Uh, some of the Elder Scrolls games were of that nature, like Morrowind was. The end boss was just there in a somewhere. I I don't know because I haven't actually played it and I don't want to spoil it for myself. But I know that the end boss is actually somewhere in the world, and you can just go. Go visit him at any time. He's just not very strong. But speedrun is like seven minutes because they do all sorts of clever stuff with spells to like fly and and be strong enough to beat him. Whoops! I should have. Damn it! Alright, this one. Pick it up. There we go. 
In Fallout, it doesn't tell you where to go, just some areas you'll be killed. The original Fallout, yeah. Yeah, I'm Mammoth Tower. Oh, I'm actually getting quite close to the sun from this. Uh, well, we're doing making it to reach the sun, that's all we know. Whether they believe the sun is a god, I'm not sure. Maybe there'll be a cutscene at the end. We're quite close, I could actually finish at this stream. Probably only like six or seven more. If I just get this rhythm going. But it's probably better left for next stream. Okay, I'll go get another one. Now that I've moved a bit more. Majora's Mask was a bit like that, except, I mean, it wasn't technically, but it gave you a glimpse of the boss battle, didn't it? And then you just had to keep reversing time and coming back until you were able to to take on the boss. I don't know about the other Elder Scrolls games. I know, I think the one that came before Morrowind, what was it? Like Arena? No. Daggerfall. I think that might have been of that nature too. Um, Skyrim? I'm not sure. I imagine in Skyrim they set up some sort of triggers to stop that from happening. Starting to feel like I just want to get this game out of the way. I might actually just go for it. Go for the final 30. I don't think I'm far off. I really want to get this game. I don't I don't like the idea of having to start another stream for this. It's not a good game to play. I mean, it's funny. But collecting 31 mammoths is ridiculous. Should be able to do it within the hour. Yeah, the jumps improve a lot as you develop. So I think in the speedrun he doesn't manage to jump as far. Also I got the tattoo, which improves your jumps a bit more. I saw all the Far Cry games were on sale as well, but I didn't feel like buying them. I don't know, maybe I... I guess I've lost interest in the Far Cry series. I really like the first three. But the newer games, I'm not sure whether they interest me or not.
I'll have to look up the reviews, because I'm worried that the newer games just end up being open world just for the sake of being open world, and just put lots of collectibles and lots of random side quests everywhere, but you kind of lose the focus, because I could see Far Cry 3 was kind of heading in that direction. Um, but I, I think they still might be good games. Far Cry 1 was a level-based linear game. Far Cry 2 was open world. Um, and Far Cry 3 was a, a lot more open world, but... Far Cry 3, they encouraged you to kill lots of animals. <laughs> lots of exotic, endangered animals, like, you know, like white sharks and t white tigers and stuff. <laughs> it was a bit weird. In fact, I was thinking I might replay Far Cry 3, but do a no animal killing challenge. Which means you can't unlock all the... Like, uh, some bizarre reason you need to kill, like couple of white sharks in order to craft uh, a pouch for some extra rocket launcher ammo, or um, you need to kill a bunch of cassowaries so you can add a, like a sight to your gun or something. <laughs> I should play Far Cry 4, because that's quite famous for um, for the moment at the beginning of the game. It's like at the beginning of the game, some... Well, it's, I guess it's not really a spoiler, because it happens right at the start, but someone puts you in a room and tells you to wait there for 10 minutes, and he goes out the room, and then you kind of escape, and then play the whole game. But... Apparently if you just wait there for 10 minutes, then it comes back and, I don't know, gives you a helicopter to leave the island or something, and then and then the credits roll, and that's actually a valid ending to the game. <laughs> so I have to play it just to experience that. The good ending. And it's probably actually the good ending, because having to play the whole game is the bad ending, because you have to put up with... Killing lots of people. <laughs> yeah. And I guess that's also the optimal speedrun of the game because it is a valid ending if the credits roll. I think Far Cry Primal is basically the sequel to this game. <laughs> should have called this stream Far Cry Primal, this is the prequel.
Tomba is the only Metroidvania game I can think of that isn't, like, dark and gothic, like... Oh, I guess Cave Story is another one that's kind of colourful and cheerful. But Tomba is, is a lot more colourful than even Cave Story. Speaking of Cave Story, Cave Story is free on Epic next week. Oh, Cave Story, that's, that's a really good... It's like a Metroidvania game which is um, set in a cave, basically, but it's... It's a developed cave, there's a whole civilization living there. Um, and you got like teleporter devices and yeah, like like all Metroidvania games, you go around doing quests for people and stuff. But it has it, it's famous for having really incredible soundtrack. And it has some branching in it. You can there's a bit of branching paths. Um, there's some characters you can save or they could die or there's certain weapons that you can get which are permanent. You have to choose between them and that changes the way you play the game if you choose certain weapons. Yeah, Tumba was basically the most colourful of them all. <laughs> Everything was just uh, like bright yellow, bright pink, lots of friendly characters all over the place. Just the whole game is just really wholesome. <laughs> Hello Q. Ah, oh, case two. So that's um uh, the one that starts in Mia's office. And the guy with the shiny teeth. And his like and the witness was that like uh, buxom lady with the cute face with the boss. Yeah, yeah. It's quite a. Uh, it's like they introduce Mia to you. They make you like really like her. She has like an air of professionalism around her and everything. And then, and then she just goes and dies in the, basically the first proper case. <laughs> Mia is the boss, yeah. Yeah, Topoid was telling me the other day he just got to the bit where Mia died 
which is not far into the game. And he already he said he was feeling like stopping playing the game because he was so distraught. <laughs> But I guess, to some extent, they make you want to play the game more because Maya is like a daughter and has no one else, so you feel compelled to take care of Maya. How many tasks am I up to? 20-something. So I'm, I'm, I was going to end the stream, but now I just want to kind of um, go for the end and get this annoying game out of the way. Yeah, Maya is annoying in, in a kind of lovable way, I think. So Q, are you playing the Japanese version then? Because I, I remember you said about um, Phoenix's name, okay. Yeah, they probably would have managed to think of better... They probably have like better puns in their names and stuff because then the English translation would have to have adapted to whatever they did with the Japanese names. In the Japanese version he claims he lived for a long time in America. Half Japanese, half English, right? Okay. That's interesting. <laughs> Don't think so, no. I think he just spoke pure English. I mean, he might have still mentioned the thing about living in America and everything, but I think his language would have just been pure English. Yeah, that's a shame that there's no easy way to get that kind of thing across in the English version. In the English version is it's still set in Japan. What? It's not set in Japan in the first place, is it? I thought it's set in New York. Yeah. But it's kind of like a a reimagining of what America would be like if there was a larger Japanese influence. So it's kind of a bit more mixed, and it explains why there's a lot of Japanese culture mixed with American culture. Oh, then they've actually changed the locations then, because... In the English version, he flies to Paris, and then he comes back home, which is New York. And then you're saying in the Japanese version that he travels to New York and come back home to Japan. Uh, it was a three-hour difference, or nine-hour difference from the other side. Yeah, nine-hour difference. No, no, it was. It appeared to be three hours because because they were looking at it from the other side of the the uh, because the Thinker statue didn't distinguish AM and PM. But yeah, it's nine hours. Well, at least that was what they said in the game. What is it in real life? Six hours. Interesting. Um, I think they needed. I think they made it nine hours because there was that thing with the three hours, nine hours. Like at first, the thinker seems to be three hours off, but um, they needed you to realize that it's actually nine hours fast, not three hours slow, or something like that. With six, that doesn't quite work.
14 hours off. Oh, okay. I think in the English one it was only a, on the 12 hour time. Yeah, I don't think they had AM, PM in the English one. Yeah. In the English version, it did also give the time in in audio only when we when you pulled the thing. Because they played it in the courtroom, and then they were like, "Oh, hey, that's three hours slow." That's interesting that they've changed the location it's set in, in Ace Attorney, because there's some places throughout the series where it's actually quite, it seems quite important that it's set in America. Like, they specifically mention certain things. So, that's interesting. I don't see why they had to do that. Why didn't they just keep it set in Japan in the English version? Where the heck is the mammoth? Um, well, the thing is, when it comes to the legal system, it's not really a close approximation to any legal system. Like, for example, in that one that I'm playing, Apollo Justice, they only they 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 are talking about a new system, which is the jury system. Before that, it's just the judge who decides what, who's guilty or not. Um, but they're proposing the new jury system in the Hall of Justice. So I think it's just it's just uh, just its own legal system that's not really neither American nor Japan Japanese. Oh, I don't sleep now. Yeah, if you've ever watched, well, you'd want to play the first game first before you do this, but there's a, a YouTube, um, Legal Eagle, there's the, the lawyer who does lots of lawyer talks and stuff. He plays the game, no, he doesn't play the game, he watches the anime, but it's, it's close enough to the game. He watches the anime and he points out, like, the, um, the, uh, the flaws and the observations based on the, the idea that it's supposed to be set on the American system. Uh, it's quite an interesting watch. And his conclusion is basically that it's all nonsense. Um, but it's, it's... It's fun to think about. It would be more interesting if he actually played the game, but I don't think he had time for that. Oh yeah, definitely. I, that, I can't imagine that being allowed in any country, just pulling evidence out of your pocket in, in the middle of the session. Yeah, that's one of the biggest flaws. But I can I mean I could see why they had to do it for the for the purposes of the gameplay.
<laughs> yeah, it must be. Well, in Apollo Justice, it's a bit more uh, down to earth. They do away with the supernatural stuff, at least while you're while you're playing as Apollo Justice, um, and it's all focused on science. So you actually do more to do with like uh, testing for fingerprints, testing for poison, traces of poisons, stuff like that, and. Instead of trying to catch them in the lie using the magical Magatama, you just kind of use... Okay, there is a bracelet which it, it seems to have magical powers, but it basically hones your Pokotel finding skill. Uh, and you have to look for their tells. Yeah, the bracelet is the thing which makes you focus on them. But, I mean, it's feasible that it could have been something you could have done without the bracelet. But I think they had to have some explanation for why Apollo was able to do it so well at that point. But they also implied that your, your assistant, Trucy, is gifted and able to tell people's, read people's, like, intentions very well, naturally, which is, I think, that, that's not a magical thing, that's just like a genetic thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they could have done it that way, they could have just made Apollo... In fact, I don't know why they didn't, they could have just made it that, that Apollo was just really, really good at observing. But they decided to give you the bracelet. I guess because you had to click on something to go into perceive mode. So I guess they wanted to have the bracelet so you actually are actually using the bracelet item to go into perceive mode and can leave perceive mode. at around something like 24, 25 tusks, so I can probably finish soon. I've just been on um, autopilot all this time, I don't even remember what I was doing for the last 20 minutes. Was that you said earlier? Did they have your boss's ghost come back to tell you to look at the back of the receipt? Yes, they did, yeah. Yeah, he could have. I think they just really wanted that moment where, you know, Mia's ghost becomes an important character in the game. so that people like Top Boy don't become too distraught when they realize that Mia is actually... St oh! I think I picked up the tusk. Mia is actually still... still around, kind of. I don't think that counted as collecting the tusk.
Have you ever heard of the, uh, what's it called, Professor Layton? It's like a puzzle game series for the DS, I think. Then there's also a crossover game between Phoenix Wright and Professor Layton, like they team up. Okay, it seems like an interesting concept. Um, I think Professor Layton was more about spotting it was more about the investigation part of things, like, uh, he's basically Sherlock Holmes. Um... And then there's a crossover where they, where they basically just... I presume they're both acting together or something. I don't know what actually happens, but... but yeah, I should probably look into the Professor Layton series. Seems... Seems like fun. There's loads of spin-offs for Ace Attorney. By the way, who, who was the prosecutor in that case? Was it Miles Edgeworth? The case with Mia dying. Mitsuragi. Uh, is he like a... Uh, uh, kind of have... Is it like... Eel-coloured hair? Uh, and he wears like very nice... Fancy clothing. I think it was. I think it was Miles. At least the, the English Miles Edgeworth. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's the prosecutor quite often in the series. And he becomes an important character because of that. to see how close I am. How things change. Okay, that's... That's interesting, I'll read that later. Um, but yeah, changing the locations seems... It seems like there's some places where they'd actually have to change the narrative a little bit. That's a bit, but yeah, maybe they did. Japan influence. I see. Yeah. <laughs> There are some characters that seem very much American, like Gumshoe, who's the like the police guy.
interesting. You're playing the Steam version, so does it still have the... So in the DS, they had a microphone. I mean, there's a microphone in the DS, and you could actually shout, like, objection into... No, not objection, you could shout, hold it into the DS microphone. And that would count as, as if you had pressed the... Um, the hold it button. The press, the press button for when you want to press the witness. And I, I did that on my emulator here. Uh, I set up the microphone and it works kind of, but it's not very good. I mean, it's too, too inconsistent to actually want for me to actually want to use it. But it does kind of work. <laughs> I, I imagine they probably didn't do that in the Steam version. Not because they couldn't, but because it would be considered too frustrating mechanic to let people use because the DS micro it didn't work very well on the DS. And there one there are one or two places in the game where you actually have to blow into the microphone. Uh, for example when you're dusting fingerprints you have to blow to blow the dust away. And you had to use the microphone. You could they didn't they didn't give you a button to bypass that. So I had to set up the microphone on my emulator to make that work. And then I had to blow. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure in the Steam version they'll just give you a button to use or something. I don't think... It wouldn't be common for games released on Steam to kind of rely, to require you to have a microphone and stuff like that. I don't think Steam uh, platform would be happy with devs doing that. How do you do that on emulator? Oh, there's, I, I'm using Citra emulator and there's a button somewhere in the settings. Emulate microphone and it lets you even choose your microphones and everything. So they have that covered. Possibly because of that game. Well, there's some other games for DS that use microphones, so I imagine they would want to make sure that was emulated. Well, this guy reached his old age. How many tusks? I've lost count, but I'm just kind of going to the end of the game. But I can check the diagram now. What? What is up with... Okay, she's wearing a mask of some sort. Skull Kid, yeah. See, look. I'm very close. Very close. Alright, just get a... A few more, maybe two or three. Oh, she's energetic. It was probably a good idea to switch character. She can go much faster.
So Quantum, if you don't manage to 100% crash, are you just going to do it in your own time off stream? I imagine you're going to want to finish that <laughs> either way. Yeah, I can see how there's no way to fit it in without um, inconveniencing the other games, but uh, I don't know what to suggest. <laughs> Well, there's always the option of quitting your day job and becoming a full-time streamer so that you can fit it in. <laughs> right, now let's see what I'm doing here. Right, I just assume I picked it up. Oh, I'm not sure if I did. Two hours, come on, we've got to finish this. So I can put this game away and never play it again. guy always seems to appear there, so I think I've gone too far up ah, northwest. Lately I've been watching the Star Trek original series and it's making me want to play a Star Trek game but I don't know if there's any actual I don't know if there's actually any good Star Trek games out there. I don't think there are any based on the original series. I remember I played a couple of RTSs when I was a kid. Just one of them was Yeah, I remember there was a good RTS I played as a kid, Star Trek RTS. Can't remember what it was. And it involved like mining resources. So it was a bit StarCraft like. It involved like mining resources from planets and then. Did I watch the pilot? No. Should I? Is that like. Um. On a really bad camera? Has 
a different Kirk. All right. Map us through truth, justice, or miniskirt. Yeah, I noticed they hit on the um, philos big philosophical questions quite often. I'm catching all the Futurama references, because Futurama referenced Star Trek quite a lot. In fact, they had a couple of episodes purely based on the plots of one or two Star Trek episodes. Oh yeah, they, they have to be watched. <laughs> I didn't realize it, I didn't realize the original series was so long. I thought for some reason I thought it was only like 20 episodes altogether or something. I don't know why I thought that. But, but there's three seasons of around 24 episodes each, or, or more than three seasons. Well, I think three seasons. And then there's a bunch of movies. I don't know if they tie into the original series or at least a couple of movies tie into the original series. The only other major sci-fi series I watched was Battlestar Galactica. Oh, and the uh, firefly. <laughs> be close now. It hasn't moved much, but maybe it only moves in groups. Expect only one or two more now. Uh, okay, I'll get one more, but I don't know if I'm actually meant to do something. If after the next one it doesn't seem to have changed, then I'll 
just check the walkthrough, see if I'm supposed to actually trigger it or something. Alright, this, but the ending better be good, or <laughs> after all I went through. It's better be worth it. I wonder how they ever managed to get people to pay money for this game. I guess it helped that it was sponsored by an actual Japanese sugar, sugar cake company. Well, I don't, not sponsored. I think they they just gave the design of their sugar cakes for, to be put in the game. This is just the normal dance that happens every now and then. I don't think that's the ending. Oh, I'm so hungry. Alright, let's have a look at this. Is just touching the bottom of that little tail that seems to be coming from the sun. Let me just quickly look at the guide if they say anything you're supposed to do. Which is, oh, it's called, the game is called The Tail of the Sun, because you actually have to reach the tail. I did reach the tail. Did I? Do I get one more? I wonder. I can't actually climb it, can I? Let me have a look at the guide. Um, completing the game. Okay, here we go. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, well, this is an interesting thing. When you defeat a mammoth, Grab a tusk or a piece of meat and select return. So I don't have to worry about what I pick up. I can pick up anything and just press return. I see. But it doesn't say how you trigger the end of the game. Okay, let's... Let's... I mean, let's do this at least a little bit blind. Let's go get another tusk. Damn it. Yeah. 
Yeah, as far as I can tell, there isn't really any game based on, like, the real Star Trek concept of, you know, exploring, discovering new worlds. Like, that kind of game. Even, like, a Telltale game or something like that would have been great. Um, they all, there seem to be a bunch of RTSs and maybe even a couple of shooters, but... Seems like that's such that's such a that would be a great concept for a game. When I get to that pig snout thing, where do I go normally? This way, I normally go this way. But there isn't anything here. Alright, try going to the right maybe. The speedrunner was saying in the comments that he was playing the Japanese version, which uh, there's one slight difference, and that's when you sleep, you can't interrupt them and wake them up. Ideally, in the speedrun, whenever they sleep, you just want to interrupt them and wake them up. Like, don't let them sleep. It damages their health, but you can, worst case, you can just get a new character. Um, but in the English version, for some reason, you can. Pick them up. She's sleeping quite often. That's a bad sign. That means she's hungry, I think, and I haven't eaten. Okay, let's find a mammoth. Come on. Monkeys here. I don't think I've even been to this section here. Okay, don't go there. Alright, eat that, eat that. What is that? Oh, it's a monkey. Oh, 
Lots of pigs. That's weird. I don't think I've been to this park before. Mountain. It's got to be around here somewhere. Ah, there it is. Alright. Any time now we might trigger the ending. She's sleeping. Okay. It doesn't look like it changed the diagram, and then maybe it's not meant to at this point. I'm sure. getting one more and then if this one more doesn't do anything then I will check the speed run because that seems more useful than the walkthrough. Walkthrough doesn't actually tell you anything about the end of the game, it just says get all the tusks. It doesn't even say how many. Momentum is really frustrating in this game. Everything is really frustrating in this game. Alright, see you later. You're gonna might miss the end of the game if it happens right now. Oh no no! Oh no! See you later. Yeah, I don't see anything changing, so... Let me just take a look at the speed run. One hour forty four minutes. Straightforward. Just watching the video at uh, the last <laughs> few moments. Oh, I think I got dance party. Oh, what does he do? He walks up to the tower. 
All right. Oh. There we go. So I think I've had it for a long time, but I didn't do this thing. Okay. Well, I mean, it's logical. Oh my god. Behold the sun in all its glory. Well, I mean, that hurts to look at. So it must be the sun. I had a vision that day. I was running through a field like wind blowing through a grassy plain. What is this? I ran every day. Finally, I had legs strong enough to climb any mountain. Now, people look to the tops of the clouds. With wings on our heads, we realize the dream of flying in the sky like a bird. Being able to fly like a bird has changed our perspective of the world greatly. The sky expanded boundlessly beneath our wings. We began to feel the insignificance of our existence. What? How exciting the wild, pure, simple life is. Ozutoshi Lido. That's it. That's Tale of the Sun. Was that ending worth it? No. <laughs> Oh my god. What a terrible game. <laughs> like, I play games that are really bad, but at least, you know, it doesn't take long to beat them. But this one you had to go and hunt 31 mammoths. Oh god.